In this video, we're going to be taking a look at how we can use the primitives with inside of ZBrush to rough out our forms. I'm also going to show you a little bit about how we can take the geometry that we make and then up res it and make sure that it's holding hard edges where we want them. And then it's starting to round corners a little bit where we want that to happen as well. So what you should end up with is a shape that's very similar to what I have. And you should understand how to make these different primitive shapes and get a really nice quality. And you should be able to have high res geometry that is very smooth and doesn't have any weird polygonal faces or anything else like that. So we're just going to try to make clean shapes and clean models. So let's go ahead and let's get started. So the first thing I want to talk to you about is reference. So from everyone that I've talked to from the industry and then just seeing professionals and how they do their work, um, reference is going to be the one thing that's going to make you a better artist every single time you start a project. And if you're working for a studio, uh, if that studio is worth their salt, they'll definitely give you time to gather reference. And sometimes reference packs are even provided for you. So I'm going to be using a tool called PureRef, and uh, it's a pretty amazing tool for just getting images off the web and throwing it in a big sheet like this and being able to zoom into it and look at different images and things like that. So you can easily go to images and double click on them. So it's a great tool for reference, right? Um, I've already made a video about this and how uh, this tool works. So if you would like, go find on my YouTube channel this video that you see here. You can do a search for it. And um, I show basically how to use the tool, how to uh, get some hotkeys and things like that for some of the different operations that you'll probably use uh, more often than not. And um, yeah, so I, th I think that's going to be really crucial for you to um, be able to understand and make reference for the beginning of each one of your projects. Um, so as far as what I'm going to be using as reference for this, uh, I found this artist on ArtStation. Uh, you can see uh, Timothy here, he made this design, and I thought it has some really nice bold shapes. So that's the uh, piece of uh, art that we'll be using to go ahead and make our design. So if you want to check out um, Timothy's work, by all means, please do. But uh, this is one of the like axe kind of uh, hammer things that I found that I that I thought again was um, just a really nice sh shape to kind of go off of uh, for things. Okay. Um, the last thing I wanted to talk to you about is when we're inside of ZBrush, we want to take this reference and we want to be able to get it inside the program. So I wanted to draw your attention to another video that I've made before in the past. And basically ZBrush has three different methods for getting um, images within the program. So you can use those to model against, okay? So um, I show you those three different methods. Uh, there's a thing with Spotlight. There's a thing with uh, Reference View. Let's see at the very beginning what we talk about Reference View method. And then there's a Floor Grid method. Um, I'm probably going to just show you the uh, spotlight method, and that's what I'm going to load up uh, for uh, this project. But if you want to see the different ways of being able to get um, reference images inside of ZBrush and being able to model against that, uh, this would be this would be a good video for you to take a look at for that. Okay, so now that we know a little bit about reference and how important that is. Um, you should have a reference sheet up off to the side, and I'll try to provide the reference sheet that I made for PureF. Uh, you'd have to download PureF. You could load that up and have that off to the side in a different monitor. And then we'll take a look at how do we get that image inside of ZBrush and use that to model against. OK, to prepare for this next part, what I've done is taken the uh, image from the artist that we looked at just a little bit ago. And I took his work into Photoshop and I separated it out from the uh, background like this. So I just uh, rotated the image, put it up straight like this, and um, just erased this out and put pure black in the background of that. And um, if we do that with inside a ZBrush, pure black on an image sometimes can equal transparency to us. So that's why I made this pure black like that. And I just saved it out as a uh, Photoshop file. When you get your final image and you want to save something and you can pull it into uh, ZBrush, you could use JPEG. That's going to have some compression on it. Um, if you do a Photoshop file that's layered, it will flatten it. Um, the other thing you can do is just use a PNG file format. So I usually just save my Photoshop document 
and then save that out as a PNG um, after I'm done with things. So I uh, just go file, save as, and then uh, depending on what I'm going to save it as, which type, um, then maybe I'm just going to use like this PNG for something like that, right? Uh, the other thing that I prepared, I just took the model that I've already built and what we're going to be building. And I took a, um, turned the perspective off inside of ZBrush. You can tap P to turn off on and off perspective. And I did a pure orthographic side view and um, also this like front on view like this and then turned on perspective by tapping P and then rotated the model a little bit and put it like this. So I've got these two images and I'll show you how we can get that inside of ZBrush. So let's hop on over to ZBrush. So here we are inside of ZBrush. And if I just want to uh, start a brand new project, what I'm going to do is hit the comma key. You probably have this as you load up ZBrush. It probably is going to have the light box come up. You can see this. So we can either hit this button to open that up and down, or we can hit the comma key, either one. And what I like to do to start off my project, I like to use these Dynaspheres. And there's a Dynasphere 128. That just has to do with the resolution of uh, Dynamesh, and that's the highest one. So I can double click on this if you've already got a project loaded. So ask, you want to save? I don't want to save that. So let's hit no. Okay, now that we got our project loaded, what I basically wanted to talk to you is that I think there's maybe like two different scenarios for what's going to happen whenever you go to build something. Sometimes with a team, you get a really, really good reference and maybe you got a concept artist and they do you um, like character turns and stuff like that. So you get a front view, side view, back view, all that. Um, maybe you've got schematics or maybe you got some blueprints or things like that. Maybe you're going to go build a car and there's information that exists out there. That's a perfect uh, scenario. I did build a sheet for you like that. And what that would look like is if we loaded this thing in, let's go to uh, texture and I'm going to dock that over here. So we can just open and close this right here, go to texture, grab this, and then dock this over here like that. So in order to get this into spotlight, and this is the method I'm going to show you, I was telling you there's multiple methods of getting reference images in here. This is the one that I tend to like. Um, so I'm going to go click on texture. I'm going to import. And what I'm going to do is we're going to go find um, the image that I was working on for that. And let's see, we got the screen grab one. So if I load that in here actually it didn't it didn't like that format let me uh resave that out real quick i'm gonna save it out as a png okay let's try that again i had it saved as a photoshop document but it had a uh, uh, solid color in there actually it did bring it in um so here it is I, i'm just not paying attention so if it doesn't bring it in you could save it out as a png that will help but uh i, I thought it didn't load it so load it here i'm gonna select it and I can go ahead and click this Add to Spotlight, and it's going to throw the uh, image up for us. Pretty cool, right? Um, like I was saying, with this with the Spotlight, what we can do now, there's a scale, so we can scale this up and down, and if you want to just click and drag the image, you can do that. If you tap Z, it gets rid of the controls and leaves the image still up, and if you hit Shift-Z, it's turning on and off this um, this thing here. What I was telling you is I put the background on this was pure black and it knocks it out inside of ZBrush. So that's uh, pretty cool. And um, that's helpful with things. Now, the only thing I want to really show you on here, there's a lot to spotlight, but I'm going to scale this up and down and maybe I got a specific location for where I want this to be at. And let's just say it's like here. The other thing is if we go to opacity, you could ghost this back even further or you could make it brighter depending on what you've got going on for the opacity there. So I'll, I'll just set it somewhere right around there like that and I'll turn off the controls for it. So I'll tap Z and I do want to save this out. So the next time I load my session, I wish this would save with the project, but it doesn't. So what we need to do is I'm going to save the spotlight and I made an area for spotlight and I'll just call this, um, let's see, ZBrush Screen Grabs, like this, okay? So this is what I consider like the, um, the optimal situation for things, right? So if we did something like um, getting a cube in here and we go to a pen, we can put a cube in just like this. 
And what we could do is you just uh, move your um, your screen around, right? So like our normal controls of this. And I could zoom out and I could try to get this to be the right size. I'll turn perspective off and I'll push this right and through here like this and get this centered up like that. And then I could um, basically scale this um, and I want to scale this down like this and I'll get the inner part kind of going right there like that and then what i would want to do then at that point is uh, zbrush does save camera data with the project so if you go to uh if we go to draw and we'll put this over here on my interface i've got uh, select cameras, store cameras and i can cycle through those what we're really doing is um if you see that if you hold down control over this you can see where this stuff sits it's under draw camera select cameras so we've got this stuff down here we can store our camera and i can store that um here's what i don't like about this uh, tool it wants you to have perspective turned on now don't worry if you have perspective turned off and you need to save the camera you just turn perspective on and you say store camera and let's just call this um zbrush uh screen grab and then side like that uh oh one and then that stores the camera for us um now if we ever need to get back to this let's just say we turn perspective off or whatever and we're over here working we need to get this thing back to where it was at you just click this uh, this camera position and you would turn perspective off and it's going to put it in the right position right so that's getting us to a point where we can start working with this. Now I could push this off to uh, the side here and you can see seeing that from a side view now, I can see my cube is like way too big, right? So I would need to uh, basically scale probably like right within through here, something like that, right? Um, so then that's a that's a uniform cube and now if i go back and i go back to my camera like that turn perspective off i should i should be good there and then if i go to the to the side of it we should have something there too so what i could have done is this once i place it here um let's just go back to this i, did, I didn't mean to um scale this so turn perspective off i'm going to snap my view and then just push this over here like this and try to get that somewhat centered up like that and then i can click uh store cam and again it wants the perspective on for this um yeah let's do this go here turn perspective back on and then store this camera and then give it a new name. I'll put two like that. And then now I've got, um, I can turn perspective off. I've got this camera view and I can cycle between the different views that you have here. Okay. So that's um, probably a best case scenario if you've got these model turns and then it's going to be easy for you to uh, kind of get, get things um, positioned and know like now I've got a, like a front view and a side view and again best case scenario for that right but what if we have a scenario where this i'm going to turn off this sphere real quick and we're going to go back to our um our texture let's load in a different image and then sometimes this happens to you where the only thing that you've got is an image that is like maybe a three quarters view or something like that so i'm going to select this image I'm going to add it to Spotlight, and you can see with Spotlight, you might actually have two images. So now that I've loaded two images, I don't need that other one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of that image. And if you hover over this uh, with inside a ZBrush, you can see it's going to tell you what all these different things do. They do have a uh, duplicate. They've also got a delete. So I'm going to delete that out. So here's our new image that we're working with on here like this um now this one is going to be 
a bit more difficult, right? Because it's already got a camera established and everything else like that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to this uh, sphere thing. I'm just going to append. I'm going to append a brand new cube that doesn't have any scale information on there. I'm going to hide everything else. I'm going to take this cube. If you remember on the controls on uh, for Spotlight, if you tap Z, it gets rid of those controls, and we can start working with uh, things. So I'm going to go here. We do have perspective turned on. Um, I'm going to try and get this... put right in here and try to match the perspective the best that I possibly can. Now in ZBrush, uh, for um, the perspective, they do have different perspective on here. So like if we need to increase the the uh, camera, like the fisheye kind of lens thing, we drop it down like this. And if I turn on polyframe, it might help with that a little bit, trying to see what we got going on here. So um, I'm just going to try to get this cube centered up, try to match the perspective to the best of my ability. Um, you could put a, if you need to put a number in here, you could actually type a number. So it's really up to you what you do, but I'm, I'm going to try to just click on what they, what they give here and um, see if I could find something that works. So I've got that cube within here and I think that's, pretty pretty decent like that and I know these corners are beveled so I need that to be like right in the center of that and I, I do know this takes a little bit of time to finesse this and get this just to the right spot where this needs to be but I think it's well worth your effort to to do so so now we've kind of got something that's representing um, this image that we have here and what we can do is um, let's just store a new cam, and I'll call this uh, ZBrush. We got screen grab. Uh, let's go perspective like that to help me remember that this is a perspective view that we've got for that. So now that's stored as a camera. So all these cameras gets actually stored with the project. So the next time you load it, that's fine. But we do need to make sure that we're saving out this um, this reference image for Spotlight. So we need to go to Texture and then go over here, and we need to say Save Spotlight. And what I'll I'll call this is um, we've already done the screen grabs one, and then I'll take that and I'll do um, let's do perspective like that and save that out. So the next time I come into ZBrush, I need to load the spotlight in, and that'll load up the image. It'll put it back where it's supposed to be and everything else like that. And then um, with your camera that you saved, you should have this to where you can get back to it. Okay. So I know that was a lot of information to just get the camera established and get it set up. It is a lot of work, but it's well worth your effort to get that done and get that done at the uh, very beginning. Um, if I already continue this out, I am going to show you how to work with the primitives. So I don't want to get too far um, into that right now. But what I would what I would start doing with uh, with things is really start to establish um, relationships with things, right? So like maybe I would append another like a cylinder in here, and we can select the cylinder, and you push that down, and we would try to get that to be um, the right size, like what we're looking at for this and so again it, it takes a little bit of time to um, to just get these these shapes roughed out and get them in the right position but once you've got that established then you can have some confidence that you can always go back to your reference image check it against that and make sure that your proportions are correct because that's your job as an artist part of the deal is just making sure you've got all your primary forms those are the bigger forms and making sure that that's your proportions are all the right size and all your pieces are working together so this step is it is highly critical that you get this um, part right so take the time to make sure that everything um, works pretty good with that if I took this then I could kind of scale that out a little bit and then if I was um, duplicating the shape and I push this over and then 
maybe I've got something like this is starting to match up. Um, maybe we scale out to here like that. So you can just you can just see how we're starting to work with these with these shapes like this and making sure everything kind of uh, works like that. So I can mirror that and mirror and weld it across like that. Okay. So that is starting to get it to where um, our stuff is, is established. I can go back to that camera and let's do this perspective one. And you can see we can, if we move things, we can always get back to it. So no big deal. So I'll let you choose which method. I am going to switch away from this image because I do think this is the harder one to lay out. And um, that's why I built the other image to where we could probably check it from the other one and do that. So I'm gonna load that up and I'll see you in just a second and we'll continue on. Okay, for clarity's sake, the method that I'm gonna be using to uh, work with is the one where we got the perfect scenario where we've got uh, maybe a three quarters view, a front and a side view. And if that's provided to you, then um, count your lucky stars. That's a good day. But um, so we'll work with this. Um, what I've got here is just the um, the thing that we loaded up for. So if you see under texture, we got spotlight loaded. Loaded that in there. So if you need to take a look, just rewind the video back just a little bit. So now that we got that, uh, the next thing I'm going to start talking to you about is um, getting primitives and working with those and then getting those established on things. So what I can do with this uh, polysphere, I can either append a new shape to it or I can actually just use the polysphere that we see there. I've got the polyframe turned on so we can see the geometry for it. And if I put on the gizmo tool, we can go to the um, this uh, gear icon that's up here. And you can see we can swap this out for some different primitives that exist within here. So they got a cone, they've got a cylinder, they've got a polycube, they've got a polycylinder, plane, sphere, uh, ring 3D, and sphere 3D. So whatever, depending on the primitive that you're looking for, they've got that. Now, the other thing to note about this is whenever we put it on, say, something like the cylinder that we see here, um, you get these different cones that you see that change maybe the resolution of things. And so this is all live. So that's, this is, this is why I'd like to work this way. I think it's beneficial. Uh, we can change the resolution of this through here like that. And I thought that there was a, another thing on there for that, but nope, we got those two controls. But what if it's the wrong orientation, right? So we can flip-flop between the primitive and then the gizmo tool. And if we need to rotate this thing, we can rotate it, hold down shift, and I can snap it 90 degrees like that. And then if we need to get back to the controls for the primitive, we can come here and we can change the options still. So that that's, um, that's a pretty nice option to have for this. I'm going to put it on the polycube just to get that established. I'm going to take the um, divisions and I'll put this at two by two by two. And that should give us a split going down through everything. Okay, I'm going to put it back on the Gizmo 3D tool, turn off perspective. I'm going to do this. I'm going to get scaled up. And if you see like this cube, what we've got going on here, um, I'll go to the side view. So I'm just rotating this to here. We can actually use the head and click on that if you want to go to the side view. It's up to you, however you want to do it. So I'm going to get this scaled up, just moving the camera back and try to get that on here like we were talking about. And I am going to reestablish my cameras for this. So I'm going to go to draw. We got our, our cameras down here. I am... I need to be in perspective. This is just, I don't know, just not so fun. But anyways, let's just go ahead and store the camera and I'll call this um, ZBrush screen grab. And then uh, this is side view like that. I'll hit enter. We've got that. And then um, I'll turn off perspective, rotate it around to the front view and then push this over like right here and try to get this centered up to the best of my ability. So it's pretty, pretty close like that. And then turn perspective back on and I'll just store the camera for that. And then this is a uh, front view. So I'll push this back over here 
like that. Front, front view, and now I've got my uh, my views stored. Okay, so now I can just keep flip flopping back and forth between the side view and the front view. Obviously, I got to turn perspective off for that to have that match up like that. Um, if I don't want to see the floor, I don't. I can just turn that off right there like that. So now we've got our first shape established. And if I go to the uh, the front view here like that turn perspective off. I can actually take this and if I wanted to um, scale it out like this, we could do we could do that real quick like that. And because of this view, you can see that there's a bigger cube and it's a little bit smaller through here like this. So we could um, we could do something like that and pull that down and then maybe scale that out and then um, Maybe I'm going to call this like uh, rename it main cube like that. And then I'm going to duplicate that and then I'll push it over here like this. And I don't know why ZBrush does this. This is, this is really annoying to me. Made a new object. It hides the original. I'm not really sure why. So I'm going to turn the visibility back on. So that's probably going to annoy you over time too. I, I couldn't tell you why that happens. But it is what it is. So I'm going to scale this up, get this within through here like that. And on my interface, I do have a mirror and I have a mirror and weld. So I can mirror this across the X axis. That's right here. And I can also mirror and weld and push it this direction. Now, where do those sit? If you have my interface, you can hold down control and you can click over this and you can see mirror sits under tool deformation mirror. So here we are under tool deformation and then mirror and then we've got we can mirror on x y and z so we are mirroring it back and forth that way and then the other part is this mirror and weld and that's exist under tool geometry mirror and weld so we're under tool geometry modify topology and then we got a mirror and weld and we can mirror and weld multiple directions on there okay so there's that let's go to this next one i can rename this and then um We'll do main cube and then outer or something like that. I'll just duplicate these and then go to the next one and then I'll push this over. So I don't have symmetry on. If I tap X, now you should be able to see this moving in symmetry correctly. If it doesn't, you might have to put it on this local sim to get things to work right. We'll, we'll take a look at that in just a second. But I'm going to push this over here for this cube and then try to get that lined up right there scale this up just a little tiny bit and then this is where this local sim for scaling might come in handy so when i put that on now you can see things kind of behave the way that i'm expecting for scaling on things i'm just going to scale this up like this a little bit scale it in then i'm going to push this right about there let's push this in just a little tiny bit like that. Okay, I'm going to take it off the gizmo tool, and then what I'm going to do is with masking, um, didn't mean to um, dynamesh this. So let's make sure for, for geometry while we're working with these primitives, I don't want dynamesh on. So if I go dynamesh, let's click that off. That way, if I accidentally unmask, it doesn't um, remesh the model. So I'm going to hold down control and I'm going to drag a um, a mask right here like that and to invert it we can hold down control and then click in the open viewport that's one way of doing it or you can hit control i and let's do that again so i'm going to mask here i want the inverse of that control i and now if i put it on scale i should be able to uniformly scale this and it's going to scale that down like that so these points are actually already set so if I want to do the opposite of that, so if I mask these and I scale this in, we can scale these down like that. And then I might have to scale it out this way just a little bit like that. And so we've matched up that shape. And you can always come over here and take a look at uh, like what's going on with this. Remember, if you hit uh, Shift Z, it turns on and off the spotlight. And if you tap Z while spotlight's on, it'll give you the controls for it if you need to get back to it for any reason. Sometimes um, spotlight gets in the way, so if we hit Shift Z, we can we can hide it. 
So we got these uh, new two shapes for us, okay? And then I'll tap Shift Z. And if we want to get back to our camera, we just click on that. I'll have to turn on perspective, turn off perspective again. Sorry for that. And then now let's go ahead and um, give this a new name. So we'll call this um, main cube outer mm, like diamond shape something like that so i'll just do some some indicator like that for this um then i might want to because i've already set up this cube i might want to keep continuing to use this cube here so i can always duplicate that and then maybe i move that down in the stack like that let's go to this main cube thing here this new one that we just made and what i want is um something that's really really thin like this and i want it to be a little bit smaller like that okay and then i'll just push it here like that and what i want to do is at that point i'm going to zoom into this so we've always got the ability to do this and i'm just going to move it back just a little bit and if we um mask this so i need to turn i'm, I'm just going to go back to this um original one that we have i'm going to turn off uh i'm going to hold on shift and click on geometry and just turn off dynamesh for that i'm going to turn off dynamesh for this object as well because that just keeps getting in the way when i accidentally um mask the wrong way so i'm going to hold on control mask this and then hold on control click and that inverts and then i'll just scale this thing down and i can scale it here or i can hold down alt and click go to unmask center points and it'll put it right in the center of that right there like that so let's go back to our front view and check this and see like what we're doing as far as proportions go and it looks like pretty pretty decent for that I do like this object to stick out just a little bit more. So let's see what we got here. Tap P for that. So I think that looks um, that looks pretty good. And I'm going to go back to the camera view right there. Turn off perspective. And once you get going on this, it, it starts to pick up some speed here. Um, we're going to go ahead and duplicate that. I'm just going to move it off here scale this thing down just like that i'll just put this in the center point somewhere like that um let's just go ahead and scale this back this way like that i'll go ahead and mask this invert it scale it down hold on alt and click on go to unmask center point right there like that and then I'm going to check it off to the side here like that. So we built that shape and now we can use the mirror and the mirror and weld. And it looks like mirror and weld is not working the way that I would expect. And I might have to take it off this local sim to do the mirror and weld to get that to work correctly. So get used to that. We've got the local transformations and we've also got local symmetry. So if things are not behaving the way that you expect, Take a look uh, there and then uh, find out what's going on with that. Okay, so there's those shapes. Let's go ahead and go here, go back to our camera view, and then we need to um, make these spikes. Before you do that, I'm just going to rename this real quick and I'll call this spike base like that. Okay, um, we can go ahead and duplicate that and I'll just leave it there and I'll just rename this and I'll call this spike. And what I'll do is this, we'll put on the gizmo tool, we'll move it out. Now we do have to have this local sim on to get it to do that. I have to turn on symmetry too, that would help. Uh, let's do that and let's change our primitive type this time. So let's go to the gizmo tool and then I believe what we can use for this is they have a cone 3D. Okay, so the orientation is not correct. Let's go back here, go to Gizmo 3D. Now that we've got that, we can rotate this, hold down Shift, and it'll snap the degrees of rotation. And we should be able to scale this up and maybe scale it out. Okay, like that. 
the deal is though um this is a cone obviously but we don't have the right count for geometry so we can go here and go to the cone 3d and we can change the divisions in this so i'll just maybe keep this here for that part that's the length of this and then here we can go and keep pushing this down until we've got like um you know four sides to this thing and maybe that makes sense to have this right here like that and then if we want to go back to scaling put on the gizmo 3d and we can scale this thing down like this let's go back to our camera view turn off perspective and then we should be able to scale this way and then just get that put in there right there right about like that i think is going to be pretty pretty good okay all right so those are um those are pretty easy those are just cubes and everything um if we have a shape like this let's tackle this shape next and that one will be a bit more difficult for us to uh to handle okay so let's go back to our camera view right here like that turn perspective off and let's let's start with our cube just because i think that's a that's a good way of working and we can just duplicate that shape um now if we want to rotate it we can rotate it and hold down shift and rotate it 90 degrees like this um and then scale it down uniformly like this within through here and we're almost to the size of what we need which is close and then what we can do is scale it out this way so it's just a cube it's turned it's turned this way right um and then maybe we want that to stick out to be about here or so something like that and remember with the primitives this is this is cool we can come back through here and then didn't mean to change that this is the um y divide let's see what's um what's happening here so if i put it on solo i was hoping it would keep the shape it's not um so we could we could get the right divisions and scale this thing out again i've already got it scaled i don't i don't want to mess with that i could show you on the z modeler um brush so if you tap b and then go z and then find the z modeler i use it enough to where i put it on my interface down there um within there you've got the ability to hover your cursor over faces edges or verts and if we hover over an edge and i hold on the space bar depending if i'm on a face an edge or a vert with the space bar you're going to get different options so let's go over an edge and we can do the default is insert which will allow us to push stuff like this right if we tap x for symmetry i got symmetry on um but i need symmetry on on the uh looks like not x because x would do this you can see that works so i've got symmetry on for that and then if I want symmetry on for Z, so we can go to transform. That's going to dock that over here like that. And symmetry is on here, so I can do Z. So we can do symmetry on multiple axes like that. So that, that that's pretty cool. I'm going to turn off the solo so we can bring back everything. And what I'm going to need at that point is I want a, a piece of geometry right here to kind of hold that shape. I'm going to get a piece of geometry here because we're going to do a taper in. So you see how it's tapered in like that. So we're going to, we're going to use that to our advantage and we're going to go here and just kind of push something like that within there. I'm going to go up to the side view um, of this. Let's go to the top. Sorry. So I can see this a little better. Um, I'll put it on the gizmo tool. What I'm going to do is hold down control, put a mask on here like that. And then I'm going to hold down alt and then go to go to unmatched mask center and if we have symmetry turned on, um, I don't need symmetry in X. I just need it in Z. So let's do that again. Hold on Alt and go to the center unmasked point. Um, I need to invert that. Hit Control I. Hold on Alt. You can see now it goes to the outer part of that. Hopefully that made sense. I had this masked. The way that this tool works 
read what it says. Go to unmasked mesh center. So this is the unmasked part, and I needed to invert that. So before we're trying to go to the center. Um, so now I can just taper this down like that and check that out. And I think that looks pretty, pretty good. Okay. Um, the next part would be adding some bevels to the, well, let's take a look at that. Okay. With the Z modeler brush, it's possible that we can, um, hover over an edge like this. We've got a bevel. Now I don't like the way that this bevels here. It's not resolving this corner like you see here, like this. So what we've got to do, um, there is a thing, if you hover over um, faces, you can do this Q mesh and then this will, if it's on a single polygon, it'll let you like pull shapes out, stuff like that. Um, pretty cool. Um, I'm gonna hit undo to do that. They also have under faces, you can do this thing called inset. And if you do an inset and I put it on this flat island, what that's going to do is it's going to take a look at this flat shape and it's a flat island. Um, if we click and drag with the inset, we can have it come in to here like this. Okay. And what that's going to allow us to do now, now when we do this bevel, it will go all the way across here and then this is all flat. So it doesn't really matter to us. And so I can click and drag that out. I can go that direction, or we could go this oops, this direction too, depending um, where you want to go. So let's just do this. And then if I click on this edge, it actually remembers the, the last bevel that I did. Um, let's see here. How did I do that? Okay. If I go from there, it does this one. And if I click this, We'll do that. It's got the same thing. Okay, so that's going to give us um, that shape that we've got going on here. Now I know from a geometry standpoint, it doesn't really look all that um, all that great. Um, but if you turn that off, it's going to have the shape that we're looking for. That is a little bit thick for my uh, for my taste. So I'm going to take it off um, the symmetry for Z. Let's hold down. Um, Alt and then click in here like this. Um, so let's let's make sure we don't have a mask on here. And I'm actually going to hold on Alt and go to the home button. Just go to the center of that. That works too. So I'll just scale that in just a little bit. I'll turn on the polyframe and make sure that that piece of geo just kind of lines up right there on that edge. Okay. So I think that was just a little bit more of a of a difficult shape for us to do. Now that we've got uh, one of those made, it's possible we could just, um, um, let's, let's just rename this um, more complex and we can duplicate that and let's just rotate it. Hold on shift. And again, I, I use this go to home center thing that we've got going on there. And if we turn on the polyframe for this, uh, looks like we are pretty good as far as the thickness goes on that. So we could do that. If you want to, if you want to make it smaller, it, it's really up to you. But now I've got, um, I've got something on the top. I've got something on the bottom and I do have something on the, on the sides for all that. And I think that that works. Um, we do have these spikes that we made. And if I duplicate those and then um, hold down alt and go to the uh, center unmasked point on that and I'll tap X to go off there. Hold on Alt, take it off this local sim. And I'm just going to rotate, hold on Shift like that. And I'm going to just push this right here like that. And I got this spike. Okay, what I can show you now is if you don't want to uh, have this one down here, how to delete hidden. So I'm going to hold down sh Control and Shift and then drag a marquee around our spike. And that hides that other part. See it there? Control Shift, drag over it, and then that will just show that part. And then I use this a lot. So it's delete hidden. So if we hold down control on here, you can see where that's at. That's under tool, geometry, delete hidden. So here we are, tool. And we go to uh, geometry, and then we have modified topology, and then we've got delete hidden. So that's where that's at. So now we've got this spike top, right? 
rename this and so I'll call this spike top like that. Okay. And again, um, we should probably go to our camera, just check things and see where we're at with everything. Now I did change the, um, the, uh, scale of this is quite a bit different. And I, I just didn't, I didn't even recognize that, uh, this, this size of this is quite a bit different. So that's where this would come in handy to kind of scale this down like that. We could do that and go to the, this more complex thing on the top and then scale that down a little bit like that. And we're getting closer there. And then we got a spike top. I'm gonna hold down Alt and then click on that. Go to the unmasked, unmasked center point. And then scale that down a little. I can hold down Alt and I can actually drag the manipulator wherever I want. So that, that does come in handy there like that. So here we go. We just fixed up the proportions on that. So that's looking pretty good. Okay. And then the next thing that we probably want is to, um, let's put a, let's put a cylinder shape in here. Okay. So we can take any one of these shapes that we've got. Um, and let's see what we got here. Uh, we've got, we've got this shape. doesn't, it really doesn't matter. We can duplicate this and, uh, move it. And what I'm going to do is uh, go back to the primitives and let's put it on cylinder. And when the other thing I'm going to do is put on the gizmo. Now this did get off center like that. Okay. And I told you it didn't really matter what shape we grabbed. If we, if we grab this main cube, that's, that's nice and centered. So here's what we can do with this. Um, if you hold down alt, we can move the uh, pivot point of this around anywhere freely you can move it on these different axes like that. You can actually, you can actually even rotate the thing if you want. Now, if you want to reset that, hold down Alt and click the reset button. If you hold down Alt and go to the unmasked center point, we do that. And if you hold down Alt and then click the home button, it sends it to the home location. Okay. Now, if I hold down Alt and click that, go to the center of the object, I'm going to let go of Alt. And now if I actually hit the home button, it's going to force this up into the home location. So now I'm nice and centered with that thing. Okay, and I can just drag it down. We can scale this thing uh, like this, and I'll just put it in the center. And I'll, oops, didn't mean to do that. I'll scale that up just like this, and we'll try to get that in the right position. And I'll just do something like that. Okay. Um, now, one thing that probably would have been smart before I did that, we could have controlled the divisions on this thing. I think the divisions on this will be just fine for what I'm using. So we've got that. And then now I can um, give this a name and I'll call this a uh, main rod or handle, whatever you want to call it. I'll duplicate that. And then now we can scale this thing out a little bit, scale it down. Let's, what I'm going to do is make some of these, um, some of these ring shapes that you see here like this. So I'll do that. And I think we'll get this to be a little bit bigger. And then if I zoom in on it and we take a look at what we got going on here, what we can do is get it off the gizmo tool, hold down control, drag a marquee along that, control click to invert it. And then I'll just put it on the gizmo tool again and I'll just scale that out like that. So we got a nice, uh, nice looking ring that we've got here. Okay. Let's put it back on our, um, on our view. Turn off perspective and let's scale that in just a little like that. Maybe go there like this. Okay. And we could keep duplicate. Let's call this um, maybe like ring 01. So what we could do is if we could duplicate that. If we want to make it into like a bigger one, we can just push this down let's get rid of the masking on it sorry about that it does remember the masking even if you duplicate it it uh, remembers the masking that you had on the objects let's try to get that the right scale just get it in the right spot okay so we've duplicated that one off and i'll show you this if we go back to the original ring and if you hold down control uh sorry let's get rid of the mask hold down control and drag you can actually drag out copies of things 
So let's scale this down just a little bit. Hold down control, drag out a copy, hold down control and drag out a copy. And that's actually going to be um, new objects like this. Okay. So we're getting there on there. Looks like we need a, um, looks like we need a cylinder down here, right? So we can take care of that. Not, not a cylinder, I'm sorry, a cone. So let's take, we can take any one of these, one of these rings. Um, we'll duplicate it. Put in the gizmo tool, just hit W for that. We can move that down. Let's change our primitive type to cone 3D. And it looks like it remembers the settings for that. So I'll put it back on the gizmo, rotate it down like this, and then uh, put it back on the settings. And let's see what we get as far as this. Uh, put that on eight for the divisions. That doesn't really matter. But on this one, I'll put it on like 16. I think it would be a good number. If I can get there. It's one thing I wish about this is like sometimes it's hard to get the exact number. And I just had it. Uh There it was 16. Okay, cool. Because I want the I want the divisions to be a specific number for that. Okay, let's put them back on the gizmo tool. Go back to our camera. Turn up perspective. Check it. And hold down Alt. And it looks like we're pretty decent with stuff. Might pull that down just a little bit, like that. Okay, and we've got we've got most of the makings of everything. Um. I think it, yeah, this was missing for me. That part got turned off. So I'm going to go back here. You can select stuff by holding down Alt and then clicking on it, and that'll select it. So I need to do a mirror, and I need to do a mirror and weld on it, but I need to do mirror and weld with local, turn off, and then symmetry. Let's turn off this local sim. There we go. That's what was preventing that from going over. So it looks like we're pretty good. I did miss this cube right here. That one would be very, very easy for us to make. Let's go back to our main cube, duplicate that, and then um, scale it. So let's, let's put it on here. I want it to stick out just a little bit more than this one. So let's let's see about scaling it up just a little bit but I want it to uh, not be the same size here. So let's put it back on our camera view. That'll turn perspective on for us automatically, turn it off. It's pretty annoying, but whatever is what it is. Um, so there's that. So I just got that little piece put back on there. And I think that looks a little better. Now that might cause me to need to um, come back to this piece. I'll hold down alt and then I'll scale that out. Um, and I'll try to do it just this one direction, right? The, and I do see what's happening. Uh, so the overall scale of that is pretty big. So let's go here, go back to my camera view, check it. And if we do uniform, yeah, we're pretty good on that. It's not too bad. Okay. Um, and I just need to pull this down to right about there and so then i think that looks pretty good we are missing our spikes on there on these so we can duplicate these spikes so i'm just going to duplicate them rotate them i'm going to hold down alt and go to the um mass center point i have to turn off symmetry for that go to the top and then just hold down shift and i'll just rotate the view like that and then now i can um Push this right here like that. So I got this spike going in. And then hold down Alt, go to, um, actually I'll hold down Alt and go to the, the home button there. And then uh, let's try a mirror and weld this time. And then this is along a set of X, this is along Z. So let's see what this gives us. If we do a mirror and weld along Z, okay, there we go. And if that didn't work, we would need to mirror it along Z and flip it, it only mirrors in one direction. So just be aware of that. Okay, 
so if I hit Shift Z, let's take a look at what we got going on here so far. So we're we're pretty darn good. So here's here's everything that we need for the layout of things. Okay. Um, the next part of the video, I know this took a little while, but th th this is just how you can use the primitives, and you can start working with that to lay out your shapes. You've got um, your images that you're working from. So I think the the workflow is is definitely solid. And if you learn this workflow. You'll be able to build most objects that you're looking for. I'll just hit Shift R real quick to check out the render on that. So the next things I need to show you how to do is how can we up-res these parts, and then after that, the other thing is building um, the wraps for this. Now building the wraps, that's probably a little bit more of a difficult problem, so we'll save that one for last. So the next part, we'll take a look at how we can up-res these different parts that we have here, okay? Okay, the next part, how do we up-res these different pieces that we have? So there's a couple different things inside of ZBrush that I think is pretty cool that helps us hold um, edges within inside of here. Other programs such as Maya, they have their way of creasing edges and things, and ZBrush has their method too. So let's go to the most basic. Uh, let's go to this base cube that we've got here, okay? And um, we didn't bevel those edges on there. Um, let's just, just solo this object real quick. And let's take a look at the the, uh, the polyframe for that. And again, if we put on the Z modeler tool and if we hover over an edge, we've got it on bevel. We can go that direction. That's not gonna work for us. We've already looked at how we can hover our cursor over a face and we can do an inset and we can do this flat island. And if we do something like that, and then I'll just do click on this same thing and gives the same options over here for that. Now, if we do that, and now we do over the edge and then click and drag for a bevel, we can bevel this edge and I'll just click on this one and we got a bevel here for that. And I think we are good to go for that shape. We can just take a look and um, yeah, so everything looks good for us here. So what I want to show you is that with poly groups, and when we turn on the poly frame, we can see the geometry, but we can also see with this color coded thing, the different poly groups. If you hit control W, it'll just group everything that you see. So here's a new poly group. You can keep spamming that and that'll make it a different color for you. So if you want to do that now, we can also group by what's visible. So if you hold on control shift and then drag, then we have this and we can hit control W. Right, and that'll put a poly group on that. Hold on control shift, click to bring everything back. And if you need a refresher for that, go back to the very first videos that I was making for uh, making the simple head and uh, everything that was associated with that and go take a look at the poly groups area, okay? So we can do this, hit control W, we've got a poly group, right? Um, now, if you are meticulous about this, so if I hold on control shift and now I click on this group to hide those, if I hold on control shift and then drag along these, I can just show this and hit, hit uh, control W, make a poly group out of that. So we can do this all by hand, right? So if you've got a really complex model, you might have to do this for your process. I am going to show you this. So if we scroll down and we look at the uh, poly groups area, they do have this thing and it's called, called group by normal. So it's going to look at the angle. So right now the max angle is 45. If we click uh, group by normals, it actually did a pretty good job of picking up everything that I would want. So that's perfect for us, right? But if this is a something like higher, if we say group by normals, see how that angle is so much higher that it's not picking up everything. Uh, if we did 75, see if it picks up anything else. Yep, it's picking up in that and that. Now, when we were at 45, it did a good job of picking up all this stuff. If you have it drop down really low, so let's see 15 and see what happens. Uh, picks up everything on there, which I, I don't think it's going to do anything too much different with those angles set for there. So we'll just leave it at 45, leave it there and group by normals. And I'm using this as a workflow quite a bit. So if you see this group by normals, I made a hotkey for this alt control shift W. So normally we hit control W and it makes a poly group other it's visible. If I hit control shift alt W, it does the group by normals, okay? We've already looked at how to set up hotkeys. Refresher for that is just hold down control alt, click on this. It'll ask you, what do you want to set that to? This is just what I'm using for it. You set the hotkey. Do remember what the hotkeys, if you want to 
have that stick. You get to click store. I'm save every time I make changes to any of these things, interface or hotkeys, I'm always saving this stuff because I always want the latest and greatest version of uh, my my uh, interface and hotkeys and whatnot. Okay. All right. So we've got that set up. The next thing I want to show you is creasing, right? And um, here's what we're going to be using. We're going to be using, it's called dynamic subdivision levels. Normal sub subdivision levels would be if you hit control D, you're dividing the model and you can see how it smooths out like this, right? Maybe that's the effect that you want, but I don't. I want to hold those shapes. And with subdivision levels, they're cool. You can step up and down in geometry and you can uh, start to sculpt on this stuff, right? Um, so we're... Just going to sculpt through this. I'll put on Damien Standard, and you can see this, right? The resolution that we got. And you can hit Shift D, and you can go down in subdivision levels, or you can tap D to go up in subdivision levels. So that's how that works, right? Or you can use this slider. I suggest, in all cases, using hotkeys for stuff. Okay, so there's subdivision levels. Now, here's the issue. If you're working with subdivision levels that they've got, and you're doing any of the modeling operations on stuff, ZBrush is not going to like that. So they've introduced this thing called dynamic subdivision levels. So if you go um, under here, under geometry, and you go to dynamic subdiv, if you just tap D, that turns it on and off, and then shift D turns it on and off. And that's if you don't have subdivision levels, right? So um, it's going to ask me, hey, do you want to do this every time before you start? You can just say yes. That's fine. Um, so dynamic subdivision levels. This is how you control it through here. You can put it on zero, two, three, four, five. So you can dynamically just turn this stuff on and off. So whenever you do this, it allows you to use the Z modeler tools and you can work with the adding geometry and everything else like that. So it's just a temporary process that's not really there. Now, if you turn it on and if you ever want to turn it into real subdivision levels, you can hit apply. And now we've got real subdivision levels to work with. Okay, so you can always transfer the dynamic thing into real subdivision levels, but I would wait for that to be like a very last step. Okay, so taking a look at this, I'm going to turn off dynamic subdivision levels, and then they've got this thing under here under um, geometry. If we open up crease, and if we want to have multiple things open at the same time, we can hold down shift and open it. So now I've got dynamic subdiv and crease open, and you can see they've got a crease PG crease poly groups okay i've made a hotkey for that alt control shift c just like we were doing with the poly group information with group by normals but you know i'm using c for that one for creasing um now if i do that there's this crease level and it's set to 15 which is means you would have to divide the model 15 times before it would stop um respecting these creasing values that we have what i like to do is put that at about a crease level number three we're going to crease polygroups, and you can see it's going to actually give us this dotted line kind of indicator where it's going to hold and crease edges. Something else, a little pro tip for you, if you go back to the Z Modeler brush and you hover over an edge, space bar, they've got a crease tool, and you can crease one edge at a time like that. And if you hold down Alt, you can decrease it or get rid of the crease. And if you hold down Alt, you can do a crease and do edge loop complete or partial so it might go all the way around the model like that so it's just possible that you could by hand crease this as well so this gives you a pretty good op um, amount of coverage i think it's going to work pretty good for you but just in case you want to do some extra special sauce you can crease it that way as well all right so let's put it on this dynamic subdiv and you can see because i've got these division levels I'll put it on just two, which is the default. Turn off this polyframe, and you can see what's happening here. I've got the dynamic subdivisions on here, still holding. And it's not really going to matter until we get to three, which is going to keep still holding. And remember, we creased that thing by a level of three. So when we go to four, watch what happens. It starts to uh, divide out for us a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to go to five, six. I'm going to go to seven. So it's going to hold those hard edges to a certain point, and then it's going to start to round those out for you. Now, if this um, feels a little bit too soft for you, then you can increase that level to either four. And if I go to six 
or five, you can see the level that works for you. So I think four is about optimal for me. I'll put it off solo and you can see what we've got. It's up resing the model for us and it's holding the edges and it looks pretty, looks pretty good to me. Okay, so let's go to another shape here. Let's try doing this real quick. Uh, turn on the poly frame. I'm going to use my hot kit, hot keys, Alt, Control, Shift, W for me. That'll do the, the poly group thing. Let's crease it. And mm, I wish this was, you could set it once and it does it for each one of these. I'm going to have to put this slider back down to four. Then I can hit the hot key, Alt, Control, Shift, C. And then that's going to crease poly group. And then now we can tap D for our dynamic subdivision levels. And I'll put this up to like five, uh, maybe six, seven. Yeah. So it looks nice and uh, smooth and crisp and everything. Right. All right. Let's do another one. Let's go here to this one. Okay. Turn on the poly frame. Uh, for me, that poly group thing. Remember, we're here. Hot key for this that I made. Alt Control Shift W. That's going to give me all this. Alt Control Shift C. But I need to come here and I want my crease to be at a level of four. I'm going to tap D for dynamic subdivision levels. Get rid of the mask that was on there. Um, and then I'll put my crease level up to, let's see, what is that? Four. And then our dynamic subdivisions, maybe seven. And you can. See if it's if it's faceted. I don't like that. So let's go seven. There we go. Looks pretty good. And again, if if it doesn't look crisp enough for you, if it's rounding out too much, then you can increase the the crease level. So it's up to you. Like what it, you know, what's what's this look that you're going for? And so we can step through all the rest of the model. Um, this one might be a little bit different. I have a hot key to solo like that. Um, let's just. Let's just do the polygroup thing, crease it. I'm going to keep the crease level maybe five. Crease polygroups like that. Dynamic subdivision levels and just do that. Looks pretty good. Okay. And I would say if there's any other shape that might be a little bit tricky, maybe, maybe these. Uh, just because there's so much going on geometry wise. Now, here's what I was talking about with this, uh, with this angle. So I did Alt Control Shift W and it didn't quite catch it the way that I want. I needed to catch these corners and everything else like that. So let's go back to this one here. Let's go to polygroups and, um, let's do group by normals, but I'm going to put this down to 15 and then you can see now it's going to capture that. That's going to work for me. So I'm going to go back here to crease. Let's do a level of four, crease polygroups, tab D, and then let's go smooth level like seven, something like that. That looks pretty, pretty darn good. Okay. So that'll work for that. And now all I need to do is uh, step through the rest of the model and I'll let you do that as well. But I think, I think you should have a good grasp on like what's going on uh, tool wise. Okay. So step through all the model and up res that whole thing. Okay. After a little bit of work, this is what you should have. All your edges should be nice and crisp. And then there should be a certain amount of bevel that's happening on that after you um, up res it. And what that ends up doing is it uh, gives you a look that is, I don't know, pretty, pretty nice and um, it's holding the edges and still has a little bit of a bevel to where it picks up the highlight on there. So I think that uh, that works. I'm going to take this shape and just slightly push it in like that. Now that we've got everything built, there was just a little bit too much of a gap there for what I liked. And you can go through each one and you should be able to hold down alt and then click on the different shapes and see uh, how that's being held like that. Okay. All right. So that's what it should look like when you're done with that particular section. Okay. Okay. The next thing we should take a look at is how can we make the, um, you know, the, 
the cloth kind of look that's uh, going around uh, this whole thing, um, like the leather, they're like a leather strap kind of thing. So we should be able to take um, the main cylinder that we have here, and if I put on solo, my hotkey for that that I made is Alt S, so we can just solo that. Let's find this in our subtool stack, and then this is our main rod. I'm going to duplicate that and just rename this L underscore strap like that for leather strap. I'll turn it off um, the polyframe, hit Shift D to turn off the dynamic subdivisions that we have on here. Now, the only thing that I need for this is this main part. I'm going to steal the geometry for that. I'm going to hold down Control Shift, and that'll hide those other poly groups that you see here. And I'm gonna use delete hidden. And that actually sits, if you hold down control and look on this on the interface that I've got is under tool, geometry, delete hidden. So that is a little bit confusing because it's tool, geometry, and they say delete hidden, uh, but it's actually under this modified topology and delete hidden sits right there, okay? So there's that. And then now what I'm going to use, I'm going to um, hit Shift D just to make sure it's at the low subdivision level, which is just dynamic subdivision levels. I'm going to use this slice curve. Okay, now that exists. If you hold down Control, that's under brush slice curve. So Control Shift come up here, and there's a bunch of different brushes that exist within here. So we're going to use the slice curve. Now with this one, all you got to do is hold down Control Shift and then drag out a line. And I'm going to do something that's just slightly at an angle like this. Control shift and then do about a thickness about like that. Nothing has to be perfect for this. All I want is this band now. So if I hold down control shift and then click on that, that should give me that. Um, if it doesn't, because sometimes ZBrush doesn't like this with the size of the polygons. So if this happens to you and there's more there, just hold down control shift and then click on that. And that'll get rid of that. Sometimes you might need to do like the inverse of things, you know, so I don't know. Um, I'm just going to click on that and then click on this here like that. And I don't need this. I'm going to delete hidden again. That's under modified topology, delete hidden. And then now what we can do with this is we've got the ability with the Z modeler to come through and it's going to hover over a face. And again, if you don't have it on your interface, um, you just have B, then Z, then find the Z modeler there. And again, if we're hovering over faces or edges or verts, you're gonna get different options. Hover over the face, space bar, and I'm gonna use, um, I'm gonna use QMesh, which is basically their version of a weird extrude or more advanced extrude, I guess you could say. So I'll do polygroup all. I'm gonna just gonna extrude this whole thing out and give it a certain amount of thickness to it. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is go along my edges and hit space bar and I'm going to do insert and that'll allow us to just do like an edge loop that sits within through there and through here. I'm going to do one on the back side here like this and then like this. Maybe I'll put one down the center, something like that. Okay, um, so we can do we can do that. Um, the next thing I might do is actually there is a hmm, I can do this extrusion with this Q mesh. So I can do Q mesh, and right now I've got it on poly group all. So if I do that, it'll extrude that whole thing out. But if I want to do this band, they do have an option like this. I don't know if you see this little tick mark, and it looks like a clock hand, right? So it's telling you something about direction. If we put this over here, we could do poly loop like that. And because it's going in this direction of this tick, we can extrude out just like that. And I can do this one and extrude this one out like that. Now, if I tap D to uh, show the, you know, uh, what we were calling the dynamic subdivision levels, and we've got that up to like six, It'll look something like that. So let's bring everything back. Let's turn solo off. And I'm going to have to move this thing up. So if I want it in the center of it, hold down Alt, click the go to center on mass parts. And we've got this here like this. Okay. So the next part I'm going to show you is how we can just duplicate this. So there's multiple ways that we can do things and we can always attack things different ways, right? Um, so we got our leather strap. Um, if I want to duplicate it, I could duplicate it this way and then just move it up like this and I could rotate it a little bit like that. 
Um, that's one way of doing it. Um, I'm just going to merge this down together with this. I'm going to go merge down. I'm not going to weld the points. Hit OK. I'll put that back on there for there. And now what I've got, they're merged together. And what I can also do, if it uh, doesn't have a mask on there, I can hold on Control, and I can click and drag out, and it'll mask that automatically for me. And I can rotate this just a little bit like this. Hold down Control, drag up for the copies like that. It's looking good. Hold down Control, drag up like that, and rotate. Um, and then this is completely up to you, like how much you want to do with uh, duplication and everything else like that, right? And maybe I don't need um, this top one, so maybe I'll just move the entire thing as a whole, and I don't need this top one, so I'll hold down Control, Shift, and then click on it. And that's interesting. So I duplicated that, and it's doing this with the uh, polygroup stuff. I'm going to put on solo. I'm going to show you this real quick, but this comes in handy. So I'm going to hold down Control Shift and then drag out. And if it's the slice thing, if you've got to hit it twice to turn slice into um, the visibility thing. So Control Shift, drag out. And if you've got the slice on, just tap Control Shift again. It'll do that. I'm going to drag out and just get the visibility of just some chunk of this. Now they have a um, hotkey to grow out visibility. You can hold down Control Shift A and that'll grow out the whole thing. And then now I can do a couple different things. I could go and I could split hidden and I could split that off if I want to keep it and split it off. I could do that. Remember, delete hidden. If I delete hidden, it's going to delete all the other stuff that's hidden. We want the inverse of that. So I'm going to hold down Control Shift, drag out. Because I don't have it on slice again, I'm just going to tap Control Shift again and then let go, not touch any part of the model. And it'll give me the inverse visibility of that. And then now I can just do delete hidden and I can hold down um, Control Shift. I don't have to select anything and turn off solo and bring everything back. And then now. We've got this thing, and we've got our leather straps on there. It looks pretty cool. Um, one thing we could do, I'm going to try just polishing this thing just a little bit and see what happens. If, ooh, that really polished it pretty hard. So maybe I'll just try a value of like even one. And that's just too intense. Uh, the polish exists under deformation. The reason it's polishing so much is because really what we're working with is this amount of geo and that polish if you've got a lot of polygons it uh, doesn't affect it quite as heavily but um we've got that there's also the possibility of using contrast so contrast like um really pulls out edges but they do have this where you can do a contrast negative and it'll kind of smooth it out you could also do a smooth and it looks like maybe smooth is the thing that i would want to use on something like that. So maybe I smooth it out just a little bit. And the next thing I could do is use, there's an inflate. And I like to use this quite a bit. That actually existed within here. So I could inflate that up just a little bit more. So it kind of balloons it out and makes it run into the surface like that. So now we've got a pretty nice look for these leather straps. And let's hit uh, Shift R real quick and then just do a render of this like that and again if you want to save camera views and let's say this is our render we can store a cam and call this um, hammer render uh oh one something like that right and uh, if we save our project or whatever we can always get back to this I'll hit shift R and do a nice little render with that and um, looks pretty good okay so that's how we can use all the different tools inside of zbrush i wouldn't say all of them but a pretty good chunk of tools inside of there to block out primitives up res the parts and uh, get everything assembled and i do think i know it took a little bit of time for this and i think you should spend a good amount of time on this stage where you're just blocking out everything getting all the proportions correct you're making sure all your pieces are nice and high res and they look really um they look really clean. So this is a this is a way that you can make 
really clean shapes inside a ZBrush using some of the primitives that they have.